Electrostatic refraction. Here's our analysis setup. It's very similar to what we use for deriving the boundary conditions. We have two different materials, one with permittivity one and the other with permittivity two. And we're drawing some kind of interface here. So we can set up this vertical line. This is the surface normal. And then we can write the electric flux density on both sides of the interface and decompose it into its normal and tangential components on both sides of the interface. We can do a similar thing with the electric field intensity. So the overall electric field intensity is E1 and E2, and each of those is divided into its normal and tangential components. One last thing to define, and that is the angle of the fields relative to the surface normal. So this vertical arrow here is drawn perpendicular to the surface. This is the surface normal. So the angle of E1 and D1 is theta1. And that's the angle between the field and the surface normal. It is not the angle between the field and the surface. Uh, it's between the field and the surface normal. Likewise, the angle theta2 is the angle formed between the surface normal and E2, or even D2. What we would like is some kind of equation that relates those angles through the permittivities with no field quantities in there. We would like to not have to calculate fields in order to figure out what the angles are and how they're related. So the first step in this is to write E1 and E2 in terms of their normal and tangential components. And we would like to do this using those angles theta one and theta two. So at first we just write E1 and E2 by decomposing it into its tangential and normal components. From there, using the angles, we can look and say the tangential component of E1 is the magnitude E1 times the sine of the angle theta one. Likewise, the normal component of E1 is the magnitude of E1 times the cosine of the angle theta one. And same exact argument for E2. So the tangential component of E2 is the magnitude of E2 times sine theta two. And then the normal component of E2 is magnitude of E2 times the cosine of the angle theta two. Let's apply the boundary conditions for the tangential components of the electric field intensity. That says that the tangential component of E1 and E2 must be equal immediately at the interface. Well, on the last slide, we wrote these tangential components in terms of the angles. So E1 tangential, is magnitude E1 times sine theta one. E2 tangential was magnitude E2 times sine theta two. We can get a second equation by applying the boundary conditions for the normal components of the electric field intensity. And remember here, the normal component of the electric field intensity is not continuous across the interface, but the product of the permittivity and the normal component is continuous across the interface. So now we can write the E1 normal and E2 normal in terms of the angles. And I won't talk through this equation, but it's the same argument that we made up here. So we now have two equations. This first one came from the boundary condition for tangential components. And the second one came from the boundary conditions for the normal components. So here's the two equations from the previous slide. Let's divide them. What we see on the left, the E1s will cancel, and on the right, the E2s will cancel. That's great, we now have an equation without any electric field terms in it. And we can also see that sine over cosine is tangent, and another sine over cosine is tangent. So in the end, we can simplify this, and we get a single equation now that describes refraction of electrostatic fields. Please do not confuse this with what is called Snell's law for refraction. Snell's law for refraction is describing the bending of a wave on either side of the interface. And that has to do with the speed of the wave varying. 
here, there's no waves, everything is static. It's still a bending concept, so we still call it refraction, but it's for electrostatic fields.